Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm going to be checking out the Silverstone Sugo 16 ITX chassis, or SG16 for short. This is one that I previewed when it was first announced, and a lot of folks wanted to learn more. And in fact, Silverstone wanted to hear more from me as well, so they offered to sponsor this video. So in fact, this is a sponsored review, but just like all my reviews, this is going to be completely objective. I'll give you my pros and cons and my final thoughts at the end in terms of how the SG16 fits into the pantheon of ITX chassis out there on the market, including the SG13, which I reviewed previously and is one of my favorite ITX chassis and one of the top sellers for Silverstone as well. Now, this is really the follow-up to the SG13, if not numerically, because there's a little bit of a gap there, really in terms of spirit. Now, it is a little bit bigger than the SG13, and it's more expensive. This comes in around $90 to $100, whereas the SG13 was typically between 50 and 60 bucks. But this is more chassis, not just because it's bigger, but because the fit and finish is much, much better. That was one of the criticisms of the SG13. You won't have that criticism for the SG16. This is a very high quality product. It feels very solid. All the sheet metal is very solid. So definitely worth $90 to $100. So right off the bat, I say the price is fair especially considering that things are getting more expensive these days. And you may say, but there are other chassis that you can get for $90 to $100 that are bigger. Yeah, yeah, of course you can. But this is 13 liters. And if you want a 13 liter chassis for $90 to $100, you don't have a lot of choices. Now, the other thing that I will mention is that I actually tested this with an ATX power supply, which is something I said I would never do in my preview. But a lot of people challenged me on that saying, hey, one of the special things about this chassis is you can fit an ATX PSU in there. So I'm going to do it. But I'm also going to be testing it with an SFX power supply because I think that's really how this should be configured. And I'll show you why when we get to the different components you can fit in with an SFX power supply and, and as well as the performance metrics. So without further ado, let's get into the build process. In fact, this is the tale of two builds, one with a small SFX power supply and one with a relatively small but still much larger ATX power supply. The ATX power supply was paired with this PF120 liquid cooler from Silverstone, which is the most powerful cooler you could use with an ATX power supply. Both of my builds will use the RTX 2080 Ti, which at 10.6 inches is about as long as you can fit in this chassis. And here's a liquid cooler installed. I actually have up the ante with a T30 fan from Fantex, but that didn't change the build process very much. And one tip I should mention to you is that EPS power supply cable must be attached before you install your radiator. Otherwise you won't be able to get behind there and attach that. So pull that cable out of the box before you get your cooler installed. And you may want to pick up a high quality 92 millimeter fan like this Noctua NFA9, which I fit in the front here. As you can see, that's going to be the largest fan I can use when using an ATX power supply. You can't use a 120 millimeter fan when the ATX power supply is installed. Thankfully, getting the ATX power supply in was pretty easy. There is a support down here, which is nice. And this is just a 140 millimeter unit. So you can see it fits pretty nicely. If you tried to fit a 180 in here, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Speaking of fitment issues, the video card is limited not only in terms of length, but also in terms of the thickness. So this lip up here could get in the way, even if it looks like you could fit a triple slot video card in there. But my RTX 2080 Ti actually fit Perfectly, it juts out a little here, but it will be covered by the front panel. And that ATX power supply looks totally normal in the front of this chassis. Now, when you can see the whole thing running and I've tucked away all the cables, it looks all right. I'm actually amazed that it's this neat inside, but I do like the idea of an SFX unit. There's a whole lot more space here. And one thing I realized once I tested this was that I could go with a much better cooler, the NHD12L from Noctua. Now I know some of you are already thinking, but what about the Scythe from a 2? That was an absolute no-go, and there's one basic reason, the fan in the front. It would absolutely get impeded by the cables coming out of that power supply, even in an SFX unit. So the NHD12L is unique because it doesn't use a front fan. That's how it's designed. And in an ITX system, not having that exposed fan is a huge benefit. Now that's not to say it wasn't still a little bit challenging to get the cooler installed. First, I had to pre-route the motherboard cable to the input on the motherboard, but then uninstall it from the power supply, okay? So you can see it's still attached to the motherboard, but to actually lower the cooler into place, that cable could not be attached to the power supply. The other thing that I had trouble with was this clip. Seems pretty innocuous, but getting my hand in on the side of the case 
and getting that attached was really difficult. What you can see here is the other side of the fan. This was actually really easy, but what I needed to do first was get my hand underneath the heat sink at the bottom of the case, clip it blind, and then do the top clip. What I'd suggest instead is actually to mount the cooler onto the motherboard and drop the whole motherboard into the case, making sure you have your power supply and fan cables attached before you do so. And by the way, just to show how close this came to not fitting, this heatsink barely got around the power supply support bracket. It only fit because it has the cutouts for the fan clips, but boy am I glad it did because the combination of using a 120 millimeter intake fan in the front, specifically my Scythe Kaza Flex, and a slim fan in the rear. I could fit Noctua's NFA 12 X15 in the rear meant the air-cooled installation had a lot of promise. So I was ready to button this up, put all the panels on, and get into the benchmark. So let's jump into those now. So first up, idle at the desktop, and I should mention that the two benchmarks on the right side of this table, the Silverstone SG13 and Fentex Evolve Shift Air, use a different CPU, the Ryzen 5 3600, so they're not directly comparable, but the GPU is the same RTX 2080 Ti, so I'll talk more about them when we get to the gaming benchmarks. But what I care about here is noise, and the Silverstone SG16 is pretty good with the PF120 liquid cooler and very good with the Noctua NHD12L. I should mention that the liquid cooler does have a bit of a whine at idle, and I found it to be pretty annoying. It's not very loud, 27 decibels, doesn't seem out of the ordinary if you look at the other cases here, but the liquid cooler is pretty obnoxious, I think, at idle, and you know, you can hear it because that case is so small and it's very likely to be positioned very close to the user. Now, the Nocto NHD12L is frankly silent at idle, and most of the noise here at 25 decibels is actually the power supply. The SX650G does not have a zero fan mode. So overall though, 25 decibels, very good, very competitive with some larger cases like the Silverstone SG14 and SG15, as well as the Sliger S620. Moving on to the CPU-Z stress test, things got a little bit more challenging for the SG16. It's no longer anywhere near the larger cases. And frankly, the performance with that liquid cooler is just disappointing. It's behind the SFF Time PATX V2, which has a slimline id cooling IS60 cooler, just 56 millimeters tall. The PF120 should be a lot better, and it's actually hotter here. Now, it is quieter at 33 decibels, but the overall balance here is really not that impressive for a liquid cooler. Now, with the NHD12L, it is better than SFF Time PATX V2. That's what I would expect of a $90 tower cooler versus a $40 low profile cooler. It's 68 degrees and 29 decibels. Now, that is what I'm talking about. A really big difference versus a liquid cooler. Just goes to show how much better going with it. SFX setup, the smaller power supply, getting more airflow, installing that tower cooler, that's the way to go with this case. You don't want to jam in the ATX power supply and then go with liquid cooling. It's not very good. And like I said, at idle, it was just way too loud. Finally, in gaming, we see the real weak spot of this case. The GPU is running very, very hot, 80 and 81 degrees. It doesn't really matter which CPU cooler you're using. That GPU is hot. It's almost as hot as the Silverstone SG13, which has a lot less airflow and is actually quite a bit smaller. And then the Fantex Evolve Shift Air, which frankly is a very attractive case that is terrible for thermals. It just kills the GPU at 86 degrees Celsius. But look, above 80 degrees with an open air cooler means something is not quite right about the balance and the thermal layout of that case. The SG16 has a sore spot here. It should not be so far behind the other cases like the larger cases from Silverstone, the Slager S620 as well. And then at SFF time PATX, which is like an 11 liter chassis, it's just a better setup because the GPU has fresh air intake and a place to exhaust air. I'm gonna be talking more about this in my conclusions, but the fact that this was just slightly ahead of the SG13 means it isn't a big enough improvement given how much more competition Silverstone has now in the ITX market versus when it released the SG13 many years ago. All right, so in the end, what do I think of the SG16 chassis? Well, I don't think it's gonna be the home run that the SG13 was in terms of sales for a couple of reasons. First of all, the market's different. There's a lot more competition. 
Uh, second of all, this is more expensive at 90 to 100 dollars. The SG13 was 50 to 60, which made it a really easy step for people who are new to the ITX market. They said, well, you know, worst case scenario, I don't like it, and I'm out 50 to 60 bucks. But hey, 100 dollars is a good chunk of change, and you might get a nice ATX chassis for that price, or maybe some other ITX chassis that's a little bit bigger, easier to work with, maybe easier to fit other bigger components in. But the third reason is the GPU thermals. This is a bit of a miss for Silverstone. They mounted their GPU up top, upside down, so kind of a novel concept. They gave it really nice mesh up top, so no problem with breathability in that sense. But what I did find was that there was a big problem with exhaust. So on either side of the GPU, you're going to have a ton of hot air exiting and hitting these side panels. And this is something that case manufacturers don't quite realize. They think that that hot air is going to go down or maybe up, but really it goes side to side when you have your GPU mounted in a standard traditional way, either upside down or right side up. That hot air goes laterally. And I felt during my testing, these panels were just burning to the touch. The GPU is struggling to exhaust this hot air and it didn't need to be that way. Now this is the motherboard side, but there could be some exhaust outlets here. And then definitely on this side, this is just a miss by Silverstone. This whole section is blocked. Yes, there are vents over here for the power supply and your CPU cooler, but this is the GPU area and there's no venting here. That's a shame, but I think it was going to work itself out anyway because this was a worst case scenario. I used a 2080 Ti, which is a 250 watt GPU, 10.6 inches long, but most GPUs that would fit in here up to 10.8 inches are going to be much lower TDP, more like 220 or maybe 180 watts. And so that exhaust issue I had, it's probably not going to be as significant with the GPUs you're actually going to buy for this chassis. And I love the fact that I could get my NHD12L in there. I didn't realize that when I started the review, but once I got the motherboard in there, the SFX power supply in there, I realized, oh my goodness, I think I can squeeze this really good air cooler in here and make this kind of a win-win. Like a lot of people want to go air cooling and they want something this small. This is not, you know, 13 liters, getting a big air cooler in there, it's very, very unusual. So if you have any questions, please post them down below. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.